There is another method of treatment that I, that I have seen some good white paper reports on, and it was developed out of Australia. In fact, it's actually called the Australian uh, wrap, and it's basically wrapping the extremity like we would wrap a sprain. So it's not going to be a tourniquet effect, but it is going to hold those tissues. Um, and it's pretty basic. You're going to have an ACE wrap in your first aid kit anyways. And if it helps, great. If it doesn't, you're no further behind. But it is, it is showing some positive recovery acceleration. So it may be something to really look at. And I'll make sure I put a link on this Royan Rescue so that you can take a look at it more in depth. Um, we also are going to be looking at potentially splinting the limb so that as to restrict movement. Any restriction of movement helps to prevent more of it getting into the tissues, the subcutaneous tissues, and into the circulatory system. Remove the ring, any rings and constricting items, bracelets, rings, watches, so on and so forth, because most likely that limb is going to swell and then those items will have to be cut off or it could cause some damage. Better just to get them off right away. Um, if the area of the bite begins to swell and change color, you can pretty much bet that the snake bite was venomous. Now let's talk about that for just a moment. We're not encouraging anyone to chase down the poisonous snake in order to kill it. However, many people's reaction is to destroy the snake after it's bit somebody uh, so that it doesn't bite anybody else. If indeed that occurs, be careful of the fangs, treat the head, even if it's decapitated, as if it's alive. Um, there's a reflex that's been noted in rattlesnakes that if you get around the, the head, even after it's been chopped off, it could still bite somebody and inject more venom. Um, so treat that head as though it's alive, even when the snake is dead. And if you can bring that rattlesnake, uh, the, the dead rattlesnake, with the patient safely, that helps the hospital identify the snake so that they can quickly get the correct antivenin as fast as possible. So there are benefits of keeping the dead snake with the patient, just not where it can actually touch anybody. Um, we're then going to move into, uh, again, monitoring the patient's vital signs. Airway, breathing, circulation, what's their pulse rate? Um, are they going into any signs of shock? And then we treat exactly the same way we would in any first aid course. If they are going into shock, we lay them down flat. I would encourage you to have them in a position where the, the, uh, the affected limb is still below the heart whenever possible, even if they're laying down. But we're going to lay them down, keep them warm. Uh, we're not going to be applying ice packs or cold packs to the injection site or the, the actual bite site. There's been noted white papers showing that that can actually cause more harm than good. Um, so just allow it to stay wrapped, um, keep the patient warm and calm as much as possible. If the person is um, getting tired, if they are starting to show signs of um, decreased breathing or a really slow pulse rate or even losing it, then we're going to have to look at our airway breathing circulation and maybe even start CPR. Uh, the goal here is not to delay emergency medical services and transportation. The goal is to get them the antivenin as fast as possible. Um, beyond this, I think there are some important pieces to this that we should note, and that is some don't do's, some, ab some don't do's that are pretty much a standard here. Do not allow the person to become overexerted. So let's say you're out in the, in the bush or out in the back, 40, and the person receives a bite. Even if you have to carry them amongst a couple different people, that would be better than making them walk. In certain cases, we want the patient to walk, like hypothermia. Even if the person can't feel their lower limbs, we would still want to walk the, the victim. Number one, it's going to keep the circulation going and help them raise their body temp. But secondly, if their feet are numb or frozen, it's not going to cause that much more harm and we could save their life. Just the opposite on a snake bite. If they have been bitten by a poisonous snake bite, the goal is to immobilize them and keep them from exerting themselves so that we don't circulate the poison. So um, keep them from getting overexerted. Carry the person if you have to. Do not apply a tourniquet. Do not apply cold compresses to the snake bite. Do not cut into a snake bite with a knife or razor, and do not try to suck out the venom by mouth. It's noted that it's, it sounds like because of the bacteria that is harbored in the, in the human mouth, 
we could cause more complications if we're sucking on it. It's not so much because you're afraid you're getting poison in your mouth, it's because we're afraid that we're actually going to infect the wound. Do not give the person stimulants or pain medications. Um, I know it's, in some cases, not so much in um, um, the Majave uh, snake because there's actually less pain in that bite than in some of the other ones, but they can be extremely painful, and so we're tempted to want to give them something for that. Unless a doctor tells you to do so, do not. Do not give anything by mouth. And that's a pretty common standard amongst all patients that are sick or injured. And then do not raise the site above the bite, above the level of the person's heart, if at all possible. Um, of course, we're going to activate EMS as fast as possible. Um, there was some uh, talk about calling poison control. I mean, if you have to, you have to. But I mean, if, if there's a puncture wound and the person's showing symptoms, we know it's a poisonous snake bite. There's whole, probably not a whole lot to do. We're not going to be doing antivenin in the field. So because there's a high risk for anaphylactic reactions, which is a severe allergic reaction. So that's not even indicated in the field. So I, I'm not sure why we would call poison control. It's not like we're going to give them milk to drink or to give them activated charcoal. It's not like a normal poisoning by mouth. We're talking about an injection toxicity here. So uh, things also for prevention, avoid areas where the snakes may be. Now this is the best. You know, in emergency medicine, it's always like pound, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. This is really one of the best treatments you could do. Avoid areas where snakes may be hiding, such as under rocks and logs, ledges, bush. Um, even though most snakes are not poisonous, avoid picking them up or playing with any snake unless they've been, uh, the person's been properly trained. Now, if you hike, consider buying a snake bite um, kit. But you're going to have to do your own homework on it because I said before, there's some, there are some pros and cons and there's not a lot of, of good hard science as to whether they're really um, effective. Do not provoke a snake. In most cases, if the snake can make an exit, it's going to run away. Run away. Snakes can't run very well. It's going to try to escape. So don't corner it. Don't trap it. Um, if you've got a walking stick, tap ahead of yourself when walking with a walking stick as you can help to alert the snake of your presence. It can also strike at the, at the stick instead of your leg, thereby indicating to you that they're there and you can go around them and get out of the way. Um, and then when hiking in an area known to have snakes, it's always good to wear long pants and boots if possible, and I would encourage thick leather or high boots that are bite resistant or bite proof. So some basic treatments, we're not gonna get very advanced. I mean, if you're an emergency medical services unit with advanced life support, again, as far as anti-venin goes, we don't carry it on the trucks, on the ambulances. So really all we're going to be doing is trying to get the person to the hospital, but as an emergency medical services professional, the goal is going to be to try to identify the snake so that we can then tell emergency uh, or medical control ahead of time what we believe the snake was, if we can properly identify it, so that they can then call ahead and get the proper anti-venin serum to the hospital so that by about the time the person arrives, they can possibly have the anti-venin ready to go. Um, that would be the best treatment possibilities. Other than that, um, as an advanced life support person, once if, if they stop breathing, if they lose their pulse, if they go into shock, we're gonna follow the same protocols for those symptoms. So uh, again, nothing really deviates a whole lot except for wrapping the extremity that was bitten so as to keep those tissues uh, compact and help to prevent some kind of exacerbation of tissue damage and spreading of the venom. I hope this was helpful. Um, I really appreciate the comments and the questions. Keep them coming. And until next time, go forth and rescue. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.